of a triple name, John Dominic Crossan. And the reason for that triple name is that way back in 1950, when I was 16 years of age, I entered a Roman Catholic, a medieval Roman Catholic monastery. When you enter a monastery, they change your name. It's like in the Bible, when you get a new vocation, they wipe out your past and give you only a future. So I, my civil name was John Crossan. Actually, I was at a Gaelic boarding school, so it was Sean O'Crossan, but John Crossan. Into the monastery, I became Brother Dominic. So, 19 years later when I left, I wanted to make a public statement that I would do it all over again. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't dare change a single thing. So it became John Dominic Crossan. But Dominic has no legal standing. So I have to keep John there. The government knows me as John, and God knows me as Dominic. And they've not been talking to one another now for the last few years. So there's no problem there. There's no confusion whatsoever. John Dominic Crossan. But if you know me, you know me as Dominic or Dom. I'm going to have four themes. The world of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus. And there'll be a prologue before it. And each of those themes is going to be divided into 15-minute segments. So I begin with the prologue. The prologue. And the prologue is to the whole to everything, to all of the themes. I want to introduce a very important word, a crucial word for me. The word is matrix. Matrix. I use it to avoid terms like foreground and background. Foreground and background. It came to me one night after I was signing books and a lady came up to me and gave me a very beatific smile and she said, that was lovely background. And I knew she meant it was quite irrelevant. Background and foreground are not interactive with one another. If you went to get the photograph taken, your portrait taken, you went to the studio and the, the photographer said, what would you like as background? I can put you in front of a beautiful Himalayan mountain, icy cold. I can put you in front of a warm Caribbean beach. The point is you won't feel warm on the beach or cold on the mountain. Of course not. They're not interactive. So I don't want to use background because when I'm talking about the world of Jesus, it ain't background you can skip. Imagine I came to you tonight and said, I'm going to talk to you about Martin Luther King Jr. But let's skip all that background stuff about American racism. You know you couldn't do it. It's not background, it's matrix. Let me talk to you about Mahatma Gandhi, but nothing about British imperialism. That's just background. No, it's not. It's matrix. Matrix cannot be skipped. I don't even want to use context and text, because for 2,000 years with Jesus, we've been doing a marvelous job of reading text and ignoring context. So I want a single word, matrix. Matrix is everything you have to know to make sense of Jesus. Jesus back in his own world. Matrix is everything involved. Jesus changes Judaism. Judaism changes Jesus. Judaism changes the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire changes. Everything is interactive. So matrix is a single word. The only alternative is another matrix somewhere else. Matrix is everything that's interactive to understand Jesus. And to summarize it, to summarize it for the moment, and we have to unpack this as we go across the four themes. Jesus is a homeland Jew within eschatological Judaism. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that. Within eschatological Judaism, within, that means against, Roman imperialism. Jesus, a homeland Jew, not like Paul, a diaspora Jew, a homeland Jew within eschatological Judaism against Roman imperialism. Another important thing about Matrix, the crosshairs, the crosshairs, the longitude and latitude of Matrix are tradition and vision, first of all. Tradition and vision. By tradition, I mean everything that your people tell you about the way the world is as you grow up, your religion, your politics, your society, 
everything. How the way the world is, that's tradition. Vision is the angle at which an individual may see it and may even change it. Tradition and vision. And the other crosshair of matrix is time and place. You cannot skip time and place. It's not as if Jesus is dropped down into Galilee and Israel, but it could have been Galway and Ireland, and nothing would change. That's absurd. Time and place belong to matrix. And of course, matrix belongs to God. So we have to figure out why at this time and this place did Jesus do what Jesus did. And you can't just move it around. Think of Jesus in the year 20, 20 CE as we say, common era century. Now moving 50 years back, you're into 30 as we call it BCE. Herod is taking over, Herod the Great is taking over the country, given to him by the Romans. I would give Jesus 10 minutes under Herod the Great before he was killed. Go 50 years in the opposite direction from 20. You're into 70 when the Roman revenge is destroying the Jewish homeland and burning the temple to the ground. I give Jesus five minutes. So you cannot take him out of time and place. Matrix is about tradition, vision, time and place. And finally, what you do with a matrix is probe it with questions. You question it, you question it. Matrix loves questions. Do not confuse questions with doubts. Doubts go with certainty. If you make the mistake of being certain, you can have a doubt. Questions are part of the ongoing process of life. So, matrix, the four parts of it, tradition, vision, time and place, probe it with questions, probe it with questions, and in the beginning is matrix, in the middle is matrix, in the end is matrix, because matrix is destiny.